Hello Geeks and Gamers, it's JJ here and welcome to today's Starfinder video. Today we are going to take a dive into space hazards. You know, flying around space is cool, being the most badass ship in a space combat is cool, making it through the drift successfully is also cool. But there are some things that can really mess up any of those between damaging zones in space, radiation, asteroid belts, there are even drift phenomena that can happen that can mess up your travels. So let's talk about some of that stuff. But before we do that, let me take a minute and show you how you can show us your support. Please consider supporting us on our mission to bring guilt-free gaming to the tabletop community by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and possibly even becoming a channel member for access to exclusive videos, Geeks and Gamers tabletop emojis, and more. If you found this video particularly helpful, please consider leaving us a tip using the super thanks feature located next to the like buttons at the bottom of the video. All right, let's start talking about some space hazards. First one we're gonna start with is gonna be asteroids and debris fields. Now these are really cool because you should utilize the hex grid when you have asteroids or space debris. Whether it is in and adding to an already going on space combat or it is something that to get to their destination the players have to figure out their way around no matter what you should use the hex grid and that is important because really asteroid and debris fields can kind of be as big as you want them to be or as small as you want them to be it can be one big asteroid that you know is just traveling through space combat like in this picture behind me and your players have to avoid it as it is coming in and if not you know maybe ships get completely damaged or wrecked or maybe it is just a field of debris after a huge space battle that your players are now navigating while they are maybe rescuing the survivors of this space combat or you know capturing the enemy survivors of a completely destroyed ship there are this is a very, very amazing tool. Now, how these fields work is you're gonna pretty much make how big this field is, you know, whether it's four hexes by four hexes or whatever size you want this debris field to be, but it will move during combat. And as it moves or ships move through it, upon entering each other's hexes, the players or the other ships involved will have to make piloting checks. Depending on how difficult you make this asteroid feels will depend on how easily it is for the players to avoid the asteroids and getting their ship beat up. That's pretty much the basics of the debris and asteroid fields is you have something you have to go through, maybe something you have to avoid. It could be fast moving. It could be just basically stationary. And that's kind of where you get a little bit of that GM discretion on how difficult this hazard is. Now, something really fun you can do with these hazards, like these asteroids or whatnot, is to make the asteroids different. So, you know, you have your normal asteroid field, which is just rocks in space, but maybe you have an asteroid field that's coming out of the sun, or a planet just blew up that was close to something or had a magma core or something like that. So now these asteroids, upon impact, upon destruction, explode and do extra damage to the ship. You know, bypassing shields basically, doing straight hull damage. Or, very deadly, you can make them full of radiation. So when they explode, you know, anything within one hex of them is now considered a radiation field and then you go into the radiation rules. There's a lot of things you could do with asteroid and debris fields. I think they're awesome. Now, that's a very much a physical challenge, hazard in space, but there are a set of hazards that they just label as damaging zones. So these are going to be gravity fields or radiation gas fields or one that uses gamma ray bursts. And these are gonna, again, vary in size and length, and maybe they move, maybe they're stationary. But these can add another aspect to combat 
just based on the type of damaging zone. So we'll look at gravity fields. Gravity fields are extremely interesting because they are going to sit at one edge of the map. And every round, if you are, you know, depending how close you are, the example they give is that if you are anywhere on the hex map, every round a ship gets pulled one hex closer to the origin of the gravity field. So every round, everybody is going to move towards wherever you put the gravity field. And then as you get closer, say within six hexes of the originating, originating point, all the ships then start to move two hexes. And once you are pulled off the hex map from this gravity field, your ship is effectively disabled or destroyed. And you can increase that, you know, you can make a stronger gravity field. So, you know, maybe a, every ship gets pulled two, no matter where you are. And then once you're within six hexes, it's three or four. You know, you can kind of play around with that depending on what you want out of the situation. That is an amazing tool. And it really, really makes the PCs think when they move. And if there's a ship combat going on, and every ship is just being pulled toward this gravitational center. That's a lot of strategy and tactical positioning you're going to need to worry about. Now, another damaging zone could just be radiation. Radiation Starfighter is extremely deadly. And if you just have a cloud of radiation somewhere in your combat, and the PCs or the enemy ships wind up flying through it, that radiation isn't going to damage the ship at all. Everybody in the ship is going to have to start making radiation saves, and that can be extremely deadly. Or gamma ray bursts, which is an electromagnetic phenomena that happens pretty much when a black hole consumes a planet, you know, or a supernova goes off, or something like that. It sends out the first round is going to be a severe wave of radiation, and then for you know, however long you want it to last, basically, there's just going to be you know, more radiation. And it's just going to slowly, it's going to start from severe for that first round, go to high, and just go down that radiation scale. That's a really fun thing to throw randomly into a combat if you're close enough to an exploding sun or a black hole or something that is high mass and gravitational pull to just explode really good for like an end game space ship combat and so you know when you're looking to add hazards into space you don't have to just stick to what they give you as examples and i've already mentioned it kind of before when i said you could fill these asteroids with things like radiation or magma or you know other damaging type elements you know, combining multiple hazards into one big hazard just layers and creates another dynamic to combat and can really give you a lot of creativity and make these space traveling, space combats, you know, uh, dangerous and kind of make your PCs worry about every time they go into space. Could this be the end of their ship? Could this be the end of them? That's That to me is really awesome. And I think they did a really good job at making these so that here's your base. Here's an asteroid field. Do what you want with it. You know, it's just an asteroid field. That's fine. It's rocks hurtling through space. Is it rocks that have radiation? And so they explode. And then all of a sudden you're into radiation saves. And now your players got to worry about them dying but your ship is being trashed too. It, there's so much open with what they've given you for space hazards. Now, there is a different type of hazard as well that isn't just in space. The drift itself can be dangerous. These are called drift phenomena. I like saying that word, phenomena. Uh, <laughs> that can happen while the PCs are flying through the drift. You know, the drift is kind of this uh, plane highway between time, space, and extra planes of existence. And all of those things can affect 
your travelings through the drift. For one, there are creatures in the drift. There are species of aliens that survive there. Like one, the paraforin. These will gather together to kind of form one giant colossal paraforin, and they will follow ships into the drift while eating kind of the trail of energy that the drift engines give give off. Now, sometimes they get a little enthusiastic, a little rambunctious, and they may ram the ships or get close to the ships. And if they do that, they will start to drain the shield power of all the quadrants around the ships. So that's that's something fun to throw at the, at the players. You know, most drift travels probably okay, but maybe they picked up a paraffin school on the way in, and now they have a giant fish space creature eating their chemtrails off their ship and it gets a little too close a couple times and so now they come out of the ship with no shields and maybe the bad guys for them or maybe there's another space hazard now they have to deal with so they have no shields their ship's a little damaged they got to their destination but maybe there's a bad guy waiting for them and now they really gotta get shit together Or one of my favorites is the planar energy nebulas. So these are pockets of other planes and other dimensions that have found their way into the drift. Uh, So I always like, you know, an example is part of like the the plane of fire. All of a sudden there's just a, a wall of fire in the drift that depending on, you know, what happens, you know, it, depending on what happens to your ship, there is the rules in the book kind of make it uh, random. So rules is written is that these planar energy nebulas, if you enter one of these, you roll a D4, depending on what the D4 comes up as, will kind of determine the random effect. And we'll go through those. So if you roll a one, your starship has all of its shield points. So all of a sudden, all your shields on all four quadrants of your ship have half the shield points after going through the nebula. You roll a two, a random system gains a critical damage condition. That's nasty. So like the fire, you know, a giant ball of the fire, the plane of fire, you drive through it, all of a sudden your engines are glitched or wrecked or something like that that can be extremely dangerous or a three your starship starts to spin and gains a new facing which can affect you know your destination you're going east in space i don't don't think there is an east in space but we'll use that as an example you're going east in space you hit you know a planar energy nebula and now you're going south in space and you come out a couple hundred thousand miles away uh, from your original destination which if you're playing a game that's like a heavy resource and, you know and gas is hard to come by or you know drift energy and all that stuff is is scarce that's that could be pretty dangerous you got to refuel again or four or is a great one because the starship's shields are fully replenished. So instead of these really bad things happening, you go through, you know, maybe it's part of the celestial plane or something like that. Maybe it's like an electromagnetic plane that when you go through, you know, overcharges your shields and everything is back to full and you are ready to go. And that is um, like mechanically as the engineers divert action in space comes. Yeah, and that's been, you know, kind of a quick look at some space hazards that you can encounter while you are traveling through space. Maybe things to throw into space combats to spice them up a little bit, make them a little bit more dangerous, and really to kind of give your players reasons to worry about traveling through space. All right, well, that is going to be a wrap on space hazards. Hopefully you learned about some really cool stuff to throw at your players while they are traveling through space to really kind of get them on edge on how dangerous space can actually be.
Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section below. But also, please come join the Gilded server where you can chat with me, the rest of the Geeks and Gamers crew, and the ever-growing fellowship. Heck, you may even be able to find a table to play at, and that is all for free. Click the link in the description below, and may your games be guilt-free and fun, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.